Let's learn about maximum likelihood estimation. If you haven't already, and you have no idea what a likelihood function is, check out my video, Probability versus Likelihood Made Easy. The link is in the description. Okay, so let's say we see a coin flip. I flip a coin and I observe heads. I want to learn what the probability of heads is. And if the probability of heads is small, then seeing heads would be very unlikely. But if it's a normal fair coin, seeing a heads is somewhat likely. And if this coin lands on heads 100% of the time, then seeing heads is very, very likely. So a coin that always lands on heads is the maximum likelihood estimate, because under that scenario, the probability of the data we observed is maximized. If this is the coin that we are flipping, then observing heads would happen 100% of the time. With no restrictions, the maximum likelihood estimate, or the MLE, is really just the distribution that always generates what we observed. So we saw that if we observed heads, the maximum likelihood estimate is the distribution that is always heads. So let's say instead that we flip the coin five times. We observed heads, heads, tails, tails, heads. What would make this most likely? Well, what would make this most likely is a coin that always lands heads, heads, tails, tails, heads when I flip it five times. You cannot get more likely than something that always happens. But we know that coins don't actually work this way. That would be a very crazy magic coin. Let's look at another example. Let's say we observe one person and they are 66 inches tall. What distribution for height would make this most likely? Well, it would be the distribution where 100% of people are 66 inches tall, right? So if the distribution looks like this, then we would see this data 100% of the time. So that is obviously the most likely. But we know that this is not how things work. All people are not the same height. So maximum likelihood estimation usually adds restrictions. And in statistics, we usually propose a probability model or distribution that describes the situation, except for some unknown parameter that we are trying to learn about. So we said that it was unrealistic for a coin to always land heads, heads, tails, tails, heads. They don't have a memory that allows them to switch back and forth like that. That would be a magic coin. In reality, how do coins work? Well, they have a certain probability of heads, which we'll call P, our parameter. They have a certain probability, 1 minus P, of landing on tails. And all the coin flips are independent, meaning there is no magic memory happening. And we just want to learn about this probability P. And if we learn about that probability P, then we completely understand how the coin works. So we added restrictions to this problem based on our knowledge of how coins work. So by placing the restrictions on the probability model, we are going to be able to solve this problem now by finding the best possible P. And this means we are no longer looking for just the trivial magic solution where what we saw happens 100% of the time. So let's solve for the MLE. So let's suppose, again, we observed heads, heads, tails, tails, heads. The probability of heads is P. The probability of tails is 1 minus P. That means that the probability of observing this sequence of heads and tails is just P times P times 1 minus P times 1 minus P times P. And we can simplify that as P cubed times 1 minus P squared. So this is the probability of observing heads, heads, tails, tails, heads. And really, it's the likelihood of observing heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, right? We don't know which universe this takes place in. We don't know what P is. And we're going to try to estimate what P actually is. And what we want to ask in maximum likelihood estimation is, what is the value of P that maximizes the likelihood? So we could solve this problem using calculus, and we could find that this function is maximized when P equals 0 0.6. So the maximum likelihood estimate, the MLE, is that this coin lands on heads 60% of the time, which is exactly what we saw. We saw three heads and two tails. So obviously, the magic coin that always lands heads, heads, tails, tails, heads would create the data we observed more often. But we proposed a model of how coins work, and given that constraint, the best possible P is 0 0.6. And if we plug in our estimate of P into this equation, we find that if the coin did land on heads 60% of the time, then the probability of observing heads, heads, tails, tails, heads is 3.4%. So a coin that lands on heads 60% of the time would only generate what we observed 3.4% of the time. And this is obviously way less than the magic coin that did it 100% of the time, but 3.4% of the time is better than any other possible regular coin. Here, we can see all of the possible Ps that we could have, right? So I gave a whole range between 0% and 100% heads. Um, and we can see that for any value, this column is the likelihood of observing what we observed. And we can see that when we have P equals 0.6, that is the maximum of all of these possible outcomes. 
Now let's look at a continuous distribution, like a normal distribution. So I observe one person's height, and they are 66 inches tall. Now the completely unrestricted magic MLE is just a 100% chance of the data we saw, a 100% chance that the person is 66 inches tall. But instead, we might add a restriction by assuming that height follows a normal distribution with standard deviation sigma equals 4 inches. So now what we're doing is we're saying we know that the data comes from one of these normal distributions. And when we see our data, when we see x equals 66, what we want to find out is which of these dis distributions would make the data most likely. And we can see that the green distribution is the highest one at this point, x equals 66, meaning that if the data came from that green distribution, that the data that we observed has the highest chance of being generated. The maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter mu, the mean of the normal distribution, is 66. Okay, so this green distribution, it is centered at 66, and that's why it generates the data 66 inches most often, more than any of these other distributions. And we could actually prove this by maximizing the likelihood function. So this is the likelihood function for a normal distribution, and we observed the data 66, and what we would do is we try to find out what is mu. And we find out that this function is maximized when mu is equal to 66. So by choosing the mu that maximizes the function, we are choosing which color curve is best for the data we observed. And the solution will be mu equals 66, the green curve. Now let's suppose that we have more than one data point. Suppose we observe two people who are 66 and 62 inches tall. Well, now the green curve makes the point 66 likely, but 62 is very unlikely with the green curve. And what the MLE is going to do is it's going to attempt to balance the probabilities so that the probability of all of the data is maximized. And the black curve best meets this balance. Both the points are sort of close to the center of the black curve, rather than one of them being very far away. And we could prove the MLE is the average of the two points by maximizing the joint likelihood function. Okay, so this is the one likelihood multiplied by the other likelihood, and that is the likelihood of uh, all of our data, just like we, we multiplied p and 1 minus p for the coin flips. And we could prove that the best possible mu here is the average of 62 and 66, which is 64. And how can we view this balancing of probabilities? How exactly are the probabilities balanced? Well, the likelihood function is the product of the individual probabilities. So imagine that we have 20 feet of fence to build a rectangular fence. And what we want to know is how do we build the biggest yard in terms of area? And remember that area we get by multiplying, just like we get likelihood by multiplying. So if I have 20 feet of fence, I could build a fence that looks like this, that is very long, or I could try to even it out and build a square fence. And what are the areas? Well, the area here is 9, and the area here is 25. So by balancing the length and the width of the fence, we maximized the area. So we get the biggest area when we balance the length and width. And similarly, we get the biggest likelihood when we balance the probabilities. So with the green distribution, there is a very high probability that x equals 66. But there's an incredibly small chance that x is equal to 62 with the green curve. And that's just like our very unbalanced fence. However, with the black distribution, it balances the probabilities in the ideal way, given our restriction of being a normal distribution with a certain standard deviation. So now, even though the likelihood of 66 is not quite as high, it's balanced out by the likelihood of 62 being higher. So to recap, maximum likelihood estimation is a method that estimates a parameter by maximizing the likelihood function. And the actual thing that would maximize the likelihood is a magic distribution that generates the data that we observe all the time. However, we add the restriction that the data must come from a certain probability distribution defined by parameters. This is our model for the data. And we then choose the parameter value that maximizes the likelihood. And this maximum likelihood estimate, or MLE, balances the probabilities of all the observed data as best as possible given the model. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.